Next day started lazily. As it turned out, I stayed for the night near a huge sandy beach, which at this time of the year was only for me, so it would be a sin not to take advantage of it. Especially that the weather, although cloudy, definitely favored swimming, because it did not resemble January, which I know from my latitudes. So I dived in the azure waters of the Sardinian Sea and had a moment of oblivion playing with the waves. I also tried to recover a track from the last day that I accidentally deleted the previous evening. In the Overlander Navy, you have track back option. What's more, you can add this track to the trip playing function and save the track as a trip, but it is still nowhere to be found and restored as a track if it has been deleted. Just beware, if you really want to delete something, it just after clicking on the trash icon deletes the item and there is no trash folder from which the deleted file can be restored. All those activities made me set off shortly before 2 p.m. Following the SS-292 south, I turned right at one point on what would probably soon be the ring road of Cuglieri, but at this moment, it was a plain gravel road with a concrete bridge across a canyon along its path. I wasn't entirely sure I was allowed to go that way, but I didn't see any prohibition signs, so I continued. The farther road to the south is only asphalt and a few picturesque towns similar to Guspini, which I drive through here. As this day was purely a transit day, I combined the main roads with the less frequented ones and just after 5 p.m. I started looking for a possible place to stay somewhere more off the beaten track. The first descent of the beaten track was not very successful. On the map, the road turned into something like a trail, and it often happens that this type of road is passable for an off-road vehicle, so I continued. The area was quite interesting, thick vegetation on the sides, but everything seemed dead. With a lot of scattered stones and a narrow path between them, I had to be vigilant. Unfortunately, after some time, I had to give up because the path became impossible due to a large stone lying on the road. And, as is often the case with this type of travels, I was forced to retreat. It was only after a dozen or so kilometers that I was able to find quite a nice spot in the vicinity of Bougaro, through a nice slalom among the dense Mediterranean vegetation. There, despite the cloudy sky just above me, I was able to catch in the distance a palette of colors painted in the sky by the setting sun. Unfortunately, the thickening clouds made a several hours time lapse, which was supposed to be a beautiful transition from night to day, turn out to be a good fight against weather conditions. The first three hours of wiping the lens 
and then it's full misting. So that only the morning sun and my wiping, of course, could dry it and show the place where I stay. Hi guys, it's finally a beautiful day. Uh, it's a really warm, warm morning, I would even say hot. As for January, we have, remember, we have winter in Poland. Um, there's no wind, so it's a perfect time to do some maintenance jobs, I believe. I got some issues um, in my car at the moment. There is a problem in the rear suspension somewhere. I, uh, I can hear some knocks there. So I need to double check what's going on. And also the charging system is behaving strangely, which needs to be inspected as well. And yesterday after washing myself, uh, the pump died, I would say. It's a matter of... Uh, of uh, current again because um, the relay is not clicking I can't hear it's clicking so um, I believe there's some issues with the wires somewhere hope so uh, so yeah it's um yeah it's a perfect time to do it if you can see I'm in a quite calm um, beautiful place almost no one around there is a road up there but um, there are some occasional cars coming and yeah, I will probably even stay here for the whole day. We'll see how it goes. Ciao. Before I started working, I took advantage of this wonderful, completely non-January weather and simply sat on a chair for a while, basking in the sun. So I carry all my tools here in those two uh, benches that I have here. You can see there's a lot of different stuff in there. Tripod. Very important chair with the, uh, with the hole. You probably know it from the video from Romania. Uh, but the most important thing that I need now are the tools, which are at the very bottom. Very good set. And also, I need to get to this um, little part here. See, there is a parking heater inside, but there are a few boxes with some tools in there as well. So I need to take a few tools out and get ready to work. started with a suspension inspection. The exercise mat worked perfectly as an insulator from the ground, which was still damp after night rainfalls. So I was reasonably comfortable considering such conditions. I was able to lay down and check everything out. My main suspicion was the mounting of the trailing arms, upper or lower. So that was where I started my inspection. I swear it's the last time Large size wrenches are often needed to repair the suspension, which is why this set is perfect for this type of work. And despite the weight, it does not take up much space. The suspicion that it was an upper trailing arm turned out to be correct. The 
all securing to the fulcrum bracket have loosened. But it must have happened some time ago because the nut seized and it was hard to move. So it got a few hits with the axe head to make it cooperate. And then, using the wheel wrench and using the much larger leverage it can produce, I have tightened both screws. Then it was time to check the other end of the train arm, and they also needed a little tightening. The advantage of an off-road car is that most of the work underneath can be done without having to lift the car, which would be tedious in these conditions. As you can see, it's relatively easy to lie under the defender and find a place for the right hand movements. After the work on the suspension, it was time to diagnose the lack of power supply to the pump. Under this mini bench, there is my hotel battery, which supplies power to most of the additional accessories. There is also a water pump relay, among other things, and first I wanted to see if there is voltage on that relay. With the help of this panel, I activate the entire water system, large button, and run the pump itself with the smaller button. As you can see, the voltage on the relay is present, so I thought it must have been the connection responsible for activating the pump itself. Here, indeed, the voltage after the relay did not appear, so it was necessary to work on the wires entering the relay. A gas soldering iron works perfectly in such conditions. Crimp connections may become loose due to frequent vibrations, therefore thickening the wires with tin is always more effective. Finally, crimping the connector insulating and after several dozen minutes we have water in our system again. The panel, in addition to activating the system, also shows the water level in both tanks and the monitoring system the hotel battery charge status. And that's how another day went by. This time the weather was perfect so the night today time lapse turned out spectacular. The whole place was additionally lit by the moon, so it added extra flavor to the whole scene. The air was dry, there was no condensation on the lens, so this time it was drawn very nicely. The next morning was full of standard activities. Setting up a camp to prepare breakfast. The scope of activities is repeatable. A chair in front of the sun to take advantage of the fantastic weather and bask in the rays. A stove to prepare this most important meal, obligatory within reach so that you do not have to get up too often and break away from this exhausting activity of full relaxation in the sun. As the stove is equipped with two burners, also adapted to the grill function, each time you need to take a moment to dismantle the grates and leave the burners only. All in all, of course, you do not need to, but I don't see the need to heat more elements than is required by simple cooking in a pot. Then, coffee. I love morning coffee in such conditions. I have an impression that each time it tastes differently and takes on some magical aroma and flavor of a particular place. And of course, a table to accommodate everything that I have prepared and to eat in comfort. The table, of course, is also foldable and had been used on similar trips for the past 10 years. It still has the yellow foil on it, which I wrapped with the color of my previous expedition car, the Land Rover Discovery 3, which I traveled on until about 2016. And this is what mornings on this type of travels look like most often. Calm preparations for the rest of the day, which is one big puzzle, and documenting everything for you. Don't you know you radiate like the sun? We 
we can feel your fire, we can feel fire. fire. Don't you know you radiate like the sun? The heat will take us higher. Finally a beautiful day uh, to have a walk to stretch my legs and arms a bit as you can see views are spectacular but we are actually going to climb there yeah it's gonna be a challenge keep your fingers crossed ciao Via Ferrata di Pan de Zucchero was the next place on my map that I planned to visit and of course climb during this trip. Seeing people on this wall, I was glad that I finally managed to hit the open Ferrata and that I will challenge myself in a bit different way than usual especially that it looked really impressive from that perspective and reminded me the German ferrata I climbed in Slovenia. But more about that in the next episode.